Hello everyone, my name is Dominic Salas and I'm delighted to welcome you to our presentation in this session extending the intelligent driver model in SUMO and verifying the driver of trajectories with aerial measurements. First of all, I want to thank Stefan Kaufmann from the IT Designers Group in Esslingen and Hans-Christian Reuss from the Research Institute of Automotive Engineering and Vehicle Engines Stuttgart for their contributions to this publication. I also work for the Research Institute, abbreviated as FKFS, and want to thank Bosch for partially funding this work as part of a project to decrease vehicle emissions. I divided this presentation into five parts. I'd like to begin with a short introduction of the areas where we use SUMO and why we were in the need of extending the intelligent driver model. This leads me to the first major issue of my presentation where I'll focus on the different components of the extended IDM. After that, I'll introduce the aerial measurements which were carried out at a signalized intersection in Stuttgart, Germany. The extracted drive-off trajectories are then compared to those of different car following models in SUMO. And finally, in the last part, I'd like to discuss the findings. So, as just shown, I will start with the introduction and why we developed or better had the desire to extend an existing car following model in SUMO when established models such as the Krauss model or the IDM already are widely used. When we use traffic simulations at our institute, we are normally interested in single vehicle trajectories or even detailed drivetrain simulations of a few vehicles. We already use the traffic simulation program Virtual Test Drive, short VTD, for real-time simulations. About three years ago, a colleague then was looking for a program for offline simulations and started to use Sumo and its extensive toolset, which of course has its key advantage in being an open source software. We now use those traffic simulations for a variety of cases, starting off with connected driving functions. There already exist many different ways to implement and use such functions in Sumo, for example with Veins or uh, Tracy. One can, for example, implement a traffic light information system, also better known as GLOSA, to determine the impact of that system. But it still is a difficult task to accurately quantify the benefit in mixed traffic conditions, as human driving has a great influence on the results. So we would like to have a model which produces realistic acceleration patterns at traffic lights. The next part of our tool chain includes environment simulations, especially for sensor simulation and autonomous driving. Aside from using VTD in our driving simulator, we also work with Unreal Engine in our offline simulations and smaller simulators. Sumo is therefore utilized to realistically affect and move surrounding traffic. To create future traffic scenarios, we need models which can imitate human and automated driving behavior. We currently have three different driving simulators where we couple the traffic simulations with the environment simulations and bring a human driver into the loop. For example, to study how a human reacts to different situations or different scenarios. Our Simulink drivetrain library completes the circle. Coupled with Sumo, it can be used in a submicroscopic manner, either either online with Tracy or offline by extracting trajectories from Sumo. Both approaches need smooth trajectories to realistically calculate emissions and energy consumption. All of this together led us to the development of a new car following model in Sumo. So I'd like to recap the main points of the previous slide. Why did we need an improved car following model? First, I have to say that many extensions of the original IDM already exist, but are not implemented in SUMO yet. SUMO is also often used for large map simulations, where millisecond simulation is not feasible, as it would slow down the simulation significantly. So altogether, 
our goal was to create a model which includes existing IDM extensions, creates smooth trajectories, emulates human driving behavior, and produces jerk values which don't exceed measured ones. This leads me to the main part of my presentation, extending the intelligent driver model in SUMO. The acceleration calculation for a SUMO vehicle can somewhat be divided into three parts. The first one is the car following model. This model describes how a following vehicle reacts to the leading vehicle. This only works for on a single lane. So when we have a street with multiple lanes, we also need a lane changing model. The model differentiates between different motivations of lane changing. When triggered, each motivation can induce acceleration commands, which produce high jerk values when simulating with small time steps. The junction model is responsible for letting vehicles with a priority pass and stopping vehicles which have to brake for a red light or for example, another vehicle on a priority lane. The reason I'm explaining this is that the acceleration calculation is not only influenced by the car following model part, but also by the other two models. I'll start off the model presentation with a brief explanation of the original intelligent driver model without going into any detail. The model uses a set of five parameters and three input values to calculate the acceleration of the next step and was originally developed as a time continuous model. The input values shown in the middle of the slide are the speed of the leader n, the vehicle's own speed, and the gap between the leader and the follower n minus one. The acceleration is calculated by the shown equation on the left. The speed term describes how the vehicle accelerates in free traffic conditions and the gap term how the vehicle reacts to leading vehicles. The diagram on the right shows the velocity over time of vehicles driving behind each other using the IDM. Even when choosing a different desired speed for each vehicle, the vehicles in the back accelerate slower and slower, which you can see here. This is one drawback of the model. The second term of the equation even influences the speed of the vehicle when the leader is far away, so that the vehicle never reaches its desired speed. This brings me to the improved intelligent driver model. The improved intelligent driver model from Triber and Kesting differentiates between two cases. When the actual gap is lower than the desired gap, and when it is higher. I call the two terms A free and A influenced. When driving at distances lower than the desired gap, that means the driver is somewhat too close to the leader, A free is ignored. That is here the right side. When the gap now becomes higher than the desired gap, the second term A influence is reduced and added to the free acceleration part. That's the left side here. By reducing A influence, the follower begins to drive independently from the leader. The graph to the right now shows the new speed curves of the vehicles when driving closely behind each other. And one can now see that they all reach um, the desired speed. The perfect velocity brings me to the next model, also known as the human driver model. Human drivers don't follow other vehicles so perfectly as shown so far. Therefore, the model uses estimated values as a human would do to describe the perfectly observed values such as the gap, speed, speed of the leader, and own acceleration. To keep it short and simple, an error is added to each perfectly observed value. So on the left, you have the observed values from Sumo. Then you add an arrow and get the estimated values, which together with the reaction times reflect human capabilities. Again, using diagrams to show the difference, on the left side you see the velocity over time of vehicles driving again behind each other. 
When we now add arrows to the observed values, the curves change. With an accurate parameter selection, the individual trajectories of the human driver model are much more akin to those observed in real traffic. The next two extensions refer to the speed update caused by the lane changing and junction model. Until this point, the model had three input values, which are the two velocities and the distance to the leading vehicle. The enhanced intelligence driver model adds another input value, the acceleration AN of the leading vehicle. I'd like to show the main adjustment with another diagram. This graph shows the acceleration of three vehicles driving behind each other on one lane. When now another vehicle drives onto that lane and becomes the new leading vehicle, the first following vehicle, here the blue line, breaks hard. But now with the new input, when the leading vehicle is actually accelerating, or at least not braking, the following vehicle doesn't break that hard anymore. The model still stays collision free because the situation then is not critical or is not deemed to be critical. A new parameter determines how cool the driver reacts. The last part of the model presentation includes further extensions we have added, especially regarding junctions, traffic lights and different driving situations. They were added to the SUMO code as internal variables of the car following model. I'll start off with the correction term to limit the jerk during drive off. The A corrected function outputs values between 0 and 1 and is multiplied with the maximal acceleration A max during drive off. This limits the physical capability of the vehicle to instantaneously reach A max, which is in accordance with real world measurements. The next variable is similar to the previous one, but is used when the vehicle is already driving and the situation changes. For example, when the vehicle changes the lane or street, or when the leading vehicle does so. The jerk is limited then to the chosen value. A reaction time for vehicles in Sumo already exists, though this reaction is static for each vehicle. When simulating with high static reaction times, collisions are unavoidable. Therefore, we use a dynamic action point time, TAP, to reduce the reaction time in critical situations and let the vehicle dawdle in non-critical ones. The last main adjustment are changing desired speeds. For example, when turning at a junction where a vehicle would brake depending on the curve radius. A look ahead time is used to differentiate between late braking and anticipatory drivers. That was it for the model extensions. Now I would like to briefly show you the measurement method to extract trajectories from a drone video. This picture shows one frame of a video that was recorded by a drone hovering over a signalized intersection in Stuttgart, Germany. You can also see the resulting bounding boxes using a neural network and a tracking algorithm. The applied measurement process can be divided into five parts. It begins with an aerial observation. Here a drone equipped with a video camera. We then extract different georeference positions, here shown as red dots in the video and track stationary markers to get the camera location of each frame. Parallel to that, a neural network detects all vehicles in each frame. Combining the two methods, we can then convert the vehicle detections, which are in pixel, into geographic coordinates. Another tracking algorithm joins the single frame vehicle detections to form complete vehicle trajectories. To reduce measurement errors, we additionally smooth the vehicle positions and immediately derive the speed and the acceleration. After we extract the trajectories of all vehicles in the video, we created a subset of vehicles 
which drove over the intersection in the direction of the red arrow you can see here on the right. The graph shows the average acceleration of the first nine vehicles queued at the light signal. Every drive off starts at time zero. That's the reason the curves are all plotted above each other. Although, of course, for example, the third vehicle started to accelerate later than the first vehicle. One now recognizes that approximately the first 0.8 seconds of the trajectories are missing. That comes from the initial vehicle movement, which can't be detected with the here presented measurement method. 0.8 seconds is approximately the time it takes until the vehicles reach 1 meters per second. The observed drive-off trajectories lead me to the last topic, comparing those to ones from sumo simulations. I added the previously shown acceleration patterns here again. You can see them on the top. To compare them with the ones from Sumo, I ran a few simulations with the Krauss model, the IDM, and the extended IDM, and plotted the average acceleration curves. Apart from the delayed initial acceleration in the beginning, you can see here on the left, the Krauss model actually produces similar acceleration curves compared to the observed ones. When studying single trajectories, it looks a bit different. The Krauss vehicles typically accelerate with their constant acceleration parameter, which is evident when looking at the blue constant line of the first vehicle. The IDM produces smoother acceleration curves, though it still has a disadvantage. Without a reaction time, the vehicles further back accelerate early, but very slowly and reach the maximum acceleration very late. This doesn't correspond with the observed data in which the vehicles reach their maximum acceleration after approximately two seconds. When we now add a reaction time, the acceleration would jump at the beginning, just as the blue line shows here. The extended IDM makes use of a reaction time and still produces smooth acceleration curves with the new driver function. The only part of the acceleration curves which don't match the observed data is the part between three and seven seconds where gear shifting has the strongest impact on the acceleration. I'm already at the end of my presentation. Now let me sum up my main points. So we integrated previously published IDM enhancements into the existing IDM model in Sumo. Next, we further extended the model by integrating an internal reaction time, speed restrictions, jerk limitations, and a new drive-off equation. To ver verify the model, we extracted drive-off trajectories from a drone video and compared the results with those from Sumo simulations. The model will still need to prove that it can realis realistically reproduce other driving situations and traffic phenomena. Future work will also include a detailed parameter identification for each vehicle in the drone dataset. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. And if anyone has questions, please feel free to ask them now.